I managed to get another full year out of my Subaru Outback exhaust system after doing a fiber fix repair in a previous video. But it was dragging on the road last week and before I stopped to wire it up, it got caught on a railroad crossing and the Y-pipe section on the right muffler got mangled. I have no choice now but to install a new cat back system. Living in the northeastern Rust Belt, I've always been interested in having a stainless steel exhaust system. Until now, I never found one for my Subaru application. I was happy to find this system on eBay and at a very competitive cost, including shipping. Okay, the package containing my new exhaust parts arrived pretty quickly. It was only two or three days at the most. This was delivered from 681 Main Street, Belleville, New Jersey. I'll let you have a look at that weld. I'm no expert, but it looks good to me. Let's see if I can get more sunlight on it. There. Oh yeah. Nice and shiny stainless. It says northeastern northeastern exhaust stainless steel. It's stamped right into the metal here. And again, the quality of the welds to me looks decent. And notice all these bends are smooth flowing bends. They're really not kinked or crimped at all. Compare this to the top name brand pipes I removed from the car. The bends are kinked up like an accordion on the inside radius. They do claim that this system will improve my performance. But of course that is to be seen. I have to say they did do a good job on the packaging to protect everything. Ah, here comes the resonator. It's round, which is different from the diagram they, they provided, but that's fine. All 
Are you as curious as I am about the thickness of these tubes? That's about 57 thousandths. 1 16th is about 63 thousandths, so it's 1 16th inch nominal. Two hose clamps. There's the donut for that flange. And the two flange gaskets for the mufflers. One thing that doesn't come with this kit, you'll notice, is the nuts and bolts for the flanges. So it's off to the home center for me because I want to use stainless steel nuts and bolts also. I'm removing these plumbing straps that I put under the mufflers because the welded on brackets that normally support it broke off. And of course the ultimate goal is to slide that out. There it is. So you can see here this bracket on the muffler, this is how they come. It's just a round dowel, basically, round bar. is inserted through a hole on this rubber hanger, and it just hangs there. This is that exhaust clamp that I featured in a previous video. And that's super tight since I did tighten it down with a three quarter inch impact wrench. But this has held good the whole time, so I definitely got a good deal of time out of them. I'll have to check how long it really was. Snapped it off. No other one way to loosen the bolt. That's going to need some heat. Doesn't take a lot. Just use a pair of pliers because that thing's still hot. Too hot to touch. And the bolt, washer, and spring. All came out in one piece and I'm going to reuse it. 
Let's see what happens if I give this a little push. By the way, never work with a flame under your car unless you're prepared. I had this under here with me just in case. This needs to provide a seal between the diameter of this pipe and the bell shape on that flange on the new pipe. This flange I added years ago and it seems to be still solid enough to use. So the original equipment, resonator pipe and Y pipe, come assembled all in one piece. The Y pipe actually, the Y end of here actually broke off. Originally this was all one piece with the, the exhaust pipe, the resonator, and the Y pipe all in one. My new replacement parts came with a resonator pipe as a separate piece, a Y pipe, and the Y pipe also came with another separate piece. So this all needs to be assembled together. I'm going to use this as a guide for the proper alignment of parts.
Well, that went together very smoothly. It's a perfect fit. Um, I'm not going to tighten the clamp yet. We provided an exhaust clamp for that joint. I'm not going to tighten it yet because I need to see how this all goes together up inside there. how this one fits. Uh, but what if I forgot? I mean, it would be no big deal to forget this because obviously you can take it apart and put it around there later. I just want to see if everything fits. I want to leave it together. Okay, that's a nice snug fit. Wasn't too difficult to get it on there. And this exhaust clamp that they provided will, will tighten that up. Now I have this exhaust hanger, this rubber exhaust hanger to put up in there. And it goes on here and on the hook, the corresponding hook up in the bottom of the car. It's welded into the car. I'm not sure if I should put this up inside there first and then jab that into it. I guess that's what I'm going to do. Okay, right there is where that rubber hanger is mounted. There's the bracket I showed you when the pipe was not under the car. And I found that it was a lot easier to handle this Y pipe and mount it up there. Disconnected from the resonator pipe. That's because it's a lot lighter and less bulky and awkward. I also used that piece of coat hanger wire to help support it on this end. That's just the sway bar. I wrap, wrap the wire around the sway bar. The mufflers aren't on it. There's no weight on it. It just helps to hold it up. So now I'm gonna go around and try to insert that resonator pipe into the front end of the Y pipe. Should go in fairly easy, and it did. These spring bolts, these bolts have springs on them that squeeze the flange together, but also allow for some movement. probably have to tighten that up more. So far this thing is fitting perfectly. As close to perfect as you can ask for. Okay I'm going to get ready to put one of the mufflers in. So here's the back hanger for the muffler. I should say that's the forward hanger for the muffler. And this is the rearward hanger for the muffler. And there's an identical pair on the other side of the car. 
This car has two mufflers. So, something tells me this could become an epic struggle. So don't be surprised if the video recording doesn't go very well. Okay, so I lifted that muffler up in there and I I got this most rear I got this most rearward hanger in place first. And then I pushed it back as far as it would go and worked this more forward one in. It actually went in pretty smoothly and simply. And now I need to get this uh, flange gasket in here and get some bolts on it. I don't know that it makes a difference which way this goes. I have stainless steel bolts, stainless steel washers, and stainless steel nuts. I got inch long. And if for anyone who might be doing this job, I guess I would recommend getting inch and a quarter just to make it easier. These are nine sixteenths. And I'm not going to tighten them up until the other side is in place. That will allow me some room to adjust things. Make sure everything's lined up right before I tighten it down. This one over here is definitely going to have to move around a bit. One thing I forgot to do on the pipes that I didn't forget to do on the mufflers is to try to remove these stickers. And this one's been soaking with a wet soapy sponge now for about 10 minutes. And it looks like it's going to come off pretty easy. So let me get to working on that. I'm just going to scrape it off with a razor. And then I'll put this up under the car. There's pretty much no other way to do this than to just simply muscle it up in there. Well, that one went in real easy. There.
Okay, everything's in. It's all tightened up. Time to start it up and see how it sounds. She's definitely whisper quiet compared to how it has been for the last few years. If we listen to this cold start the next morning, I think you'll hear what I'm about to describe. The obvious question here is why is it so noisy when I first started up? Then, after a few minutes of running, it gets quieter and quieter. Why? When it first starts up, there's high idle and a lot of noise. Then it quickly drops, then surges up and down a bit. It took me about a minute to come up with a theory. I got the idea the engine control module was searching for new operational parameters because the new exhaust system was creating a very different back pressure and flow profile. I'm going to let it get warmed up a little bit and as the engine speed gradually decreases you'll see how much quieter it gets. I'm really interested to see what it's going to sound like on the road. So in the time it took me to lower the front end and put the jack away, 
The engine has reached about one quarter of the normal temperature. And you can hear the sound level now. So I disconnected the battery for a while to reset the ECM. Okay, this will be the third cold start after I reset the ECM. It made only a small difference. The engine settles down faster and gets quieter faster. I'm satisfied with this. It's time for a road test. Well, unfortunately, the loud sound of the Blizzak snow tires on dry pavement is drowning out the sound of the engine and the exhaust system. So there isn't much to hear. However, it is running more smoothly and more quietly than it used to. Okay, I'll try to accelerate rather aggressively here and uh, we'll see what it sounds like. That was up to 4,000 RPM. Once I get these snow tires off and get my new summer tires on, I'll take it for another test run and uh, maybe I'll post a short update just so you can hear what it sounds like. I'd also like to figure out how to mount the camera on the outside so it can actually hear the exhaust pipes. But that's for another day. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Purring real nice right now.